Here's a quick overview of my hydroponic garden. It's a deep water culture system and it's comprised of two separate reservoirs. One reservoir on the far side is more for seed starting and the reservoir on the right side, or the closer side, is more for finishing the plant growth or going through bloom stages. Um, so we'll zoom in a little closer and I'll show you how it's all put together. The first aspect of uh, hydroponics basically is uh, light and since I'm doing this indoors I needed an artificial light source. A while ago when I wanted to start some seeds I was looking for a kind of an inexpensive way to provide them light and I came across this uh, fluorescent light fixture with daylight bulbs. I picked it up at Rona or Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that and it was relatively inexpensive and I knew if it didn't work for seeds I could always use it in the shop for lighting. So it's worked out quite well. I've mainly grown leafy greens with it, um, some beans and started tomatoes with it. To push tomatoes right through a full bloom stage I probably need a little more light but this is kind of a cost effective way to go. These are T8 bulbs. I would suggest going with T5 if you can find them but the fixtures, I, I just couldn't find the bulb length I wanted in T5, so I went with an older T8, but it still works. The other part of my system is the shelf that it all sits on. I wanted it to look decently nice because it's in my office and I see it every day, so I bought these tension shelf units from Ikea. Uh, you can see on the left and right, they're the two rods. They basically uh, tension between your floor and your ceiling. These ones I chose to screw into the roof just because there's a little bit of weight on the shelves and I didn't want it toppling over. And then between them I just strung some shelves that I had laying around uh, which were much thicker than the ones they normally use. And I went this route just due to the fact that those two black buckets there hold eight and a half liters of water each so they're quite heavy when they're all full up. Uh, the distance between them is four feet which fit my grow light perfectly. And there they sit. This is the second reservoir in my two reservoir system. This is basically for continuing growth of the established plants. Um, all this is is a 20 odd liter container I picked up from Canadian Tire and then I took a, uh, actually in this one I just took a pocket knife and cut six holes in the top to fit these uh, basically homemade net pots. Uh, this is a deep water culture system and I won't go into all the aspects of that system but essentially it's just plants hanging in water or just above water. Um, when I was at my hydroponic store I actually didn't buy any net cups so I ended up making my own net cups and all these are are 12 ounce party cups or like solo cups that I modified the bottom on and I can't pull these out quite far enough to show you all the holes so I will show you in a second here. Uh, the media I use in the top is basically it's called hydrocorn it's just a, a brand name for a hydrotin which is this expanded clay pellets um, similar to, to lava rock it's just a, a media that absorbs water and holds it um, for all intents and purposes you could use anything um, perlite or, or marbles if you really wanted to I suppose but uh, I do have access to a, like a store that carries um, a lot of hydroponics gear so I was able to get something that I wanted to use. Here you can see the bottom of those solar cups and how I modified them. I uh, took my soldering station and I turned the temperature down to about 450 degrees and was able to melt these holes um, without damaging the tip of my soldering iron from basically burning the, uh, the plastic onto it. Since only the bottom portion of the pot touches the water and the roots primarily go straight out the bottom I just melted enough holes in the bottom or the bottom about three quarters of an inch or so. Uh, if it needs more holes in the future I can always melt more but I think this will work just fine for now. Not really cost effective because net pots are you know a few cents maybe you know 50 cents for a pot, 20 cents for a pot but uh, I was already gone from the store by the time I got home so I picked up a big stack of cups and just went with these. Here's also a shot of the media I use. This is Hydrotin. Uh, the actual brand is Hydrocorn. And like I said, it's just expanded clay pellets that have been fired in a furnace. 
Um, all you really want is something that retains water really well and is basically inert. So like I said, you can use a, a whole plethora of things, but I wanted to use hydroton and I had a source for it, so that's what I used. This is the first reservoir I use. This is basically my seed starter. And you can see the difference between this one and the other reservoir is there's these bulkheads, these three-way bulkheads, um, with uh, tubing coming off them. And these two bulkheads are connected internally inside the bucket to a pump. And the pump basically pumps the nutrient water up and fertilizes the seeds. When the seeds are small they don't have roots to reach the nutrient water on the bottom so I go with kind of a drip irrigation method. These, this pump comes on for 15 minutes every few hours uh, just to keep the seeds moist. And since you can't really start seeds directly in hydroton because they'll fall through the bottom, um, you may be able to see I have cotton balls actually underneath the hydroton, only about maybe a, a half inch down or so, and I sprinkle the seeds directly on that, and that way when the pump irrigates them, the cotton holds the water and uh, lets the seeds get established. And once the seeds are established enough that the roots can reach the bottom where the nutrient water is, then I no longer have to run the little irrigation pump on the top. This is just to make my life easier. You could do it too with just a uh, basically a little watering can and give them a little water, you know, three or four times a day. But uh, I want to see how much I can just, you know, how much I can automate. So I went with that method. These little bulkheads were printed. You might be able to hear in the background my my 3D printer churning away more parts. Um, we'll go over that a little later on in the video. But uh, that's basically the way I was able to split the single output from the pump into uh, six outputs to provide water to all the pots. In a deep water culture system, as the system I'm using, air is very important to keep the plant growing properly and provide enough uh, uh, well, air to its roots. So this is a air pump suitable for I believe a hundred to a hundred and fifty uh, liter aquarium. I probably could have gone with a larger system but for right now it seems to be working just fine. Uh, just a fish air pump is connected to a check valve just basically to keep water backflow uh, from ruining the pump if the pump shuts down. And then this is just a five-way gang fitting. Um, three of these valves run to this bucket which is my main growing bucket so that means there's one of these bubblers per two net pots and then the last two run over that way to my starter bucket. So the starter bucket doesn't have water that's as oxygenated as my um, basically my, my second bucket here but they don't make uh, or at least I couldn't find locally a six-way gang valve so I went with a five-way. The air pump feeds these little stones these provide the bubbles inside the nutrient tanks these are just cheap um, air stones that I got at a uh, fish store, aquarium store. Um, ideally much larger air stone would be best but like I said I was trying to keep costs low for this initial uh, test of the system so I went with these I think the four packs about two dollars and I bought uh, a couple packs just so I'd have a few extra on hand. Here you can see inside the first tank, this is the one with the drip irrigation system as well. Right now I just have the lid pulled to the side and you can see the haphazard job I took cutting the holes for the net pots. You can also see the blue irrigation tubes underneath. There's two latex tubes which run down to a Y splitter which is also 3D printed. So you can see there and the Y splitter then connects to the water pump that's situated on the bottom of the tank. The water pump I actually chose to use is just a, uh, a pump meant for uh, I think a turtle tank to pump water for just little water features. It's very low, I think 45 gallons per hour, um, but the water requirements for the, this drip system I'm running are very very small so it, it seems to work just fine. It's also only consumes about 3 watts so adds to the efficiency of my system. On the left you can see one of the bubblers and that silver bracket is also something I printed and then affixed to the bottom of the tank to hold the bubbler in place. And 
if I move my hand to block the other light source, you can see the other bubbler also affixed with a printed bracket. And there's more brackets in there to hold the power cables for the pumps and whatnot. Um, but nothing too fancy, just got to aerate the water. Here's a view of the second tank. Basically this is the tank that the plants will get transferred into once their root system is established. Well, you can see I have the three black air lines coming in from the back. They're just pushed through a hole that I've drilled through the tub and I made sure the hole was tight enough so that the water wouldn't, wouldn't get out. I mean the water level will never be that high but um, just to be on the safe side. And then they run down to the bottom where they're affixed to the bottom of the the tank in a similar manner as the other one. So you can see one bubbler on the left, one in the center, and one on the right. This one has significantly more air in it and I've uh, basically turned the gang valve to let more air flow to this bucket as the plant will be larger when it gets in this bucket and have a greater need for oxygen so the water is much more oxygenated. One thing I should state is the water I use is uh, reverse osmosis water. Basically we, tap water has, uh, or in my lit, my area anyways, uh, city tap water has too much chlorine and it has too many uh, dissolved chemicals, you know, fluoride in it. Um, stuff that's not the greatest for plant growth. So I use reverse osmosis water, which has a very low parts per million um, mineral count. So uh, it's as best as I'm going to get right now. It'd be better for me to basically pH balance this water as the pH is probably a little bit high but I don't have a pH test meter and I was trying to keep the, the cost relatively low. So I'm imagining this water pH is probably maybe six and a half, seven, and it'd probably be best to be up around six um, for pH, but it should work just fine considering I've grown plants with city water, you know, heavily chlorinated water. Um, this reverse osmosis water should be much better. Here you can see through the lid of the bucket and you can see where the water level rises to on the bottom of my DIY net cup. You want the water level just at the base of the cup. Um, this one's a little higher right now. Once I drop plants into it, the water level will probably be reduced just slightly uh, to let the roots kind of find their way down and promote, promote uh, you know, root growth. But that's the level that you'd you'd uh, you'd have your water set at, and that's also why you want a media that uh, holds on to water and wicks water, as the uh, hydrotin will want to pull water up. So it kind of gives a plant incentive to grow its roots down towards the nutrient path. Another important aspect of the system, especially when running off one pump with multiple air stones, is being able to regulate the air to each stone. Um, obviously, with the air source coming in here. If I opened this valve wide open, it would take the lion's share as opposed to these because the manifold length is longer and the air wants to take the, the path of least resistance. So with this manifold, I'm able to basically uh, choke down the air supply for these and then progressively um, allow more air through so all the stones receive a uh, equal value of air. Plus all the stones are probably not created exactly equal and some air, you know, let air through more readily than others. So this lets you balance the system. And, and get good, uh, good bubbles through, through all the outlets. With all the technical details aside, the way I go from seed to plant is uh, basically in this order. I take my starting tank here, fill it up with about, uh, it takes about eight and a half liters of reverse osmosis water, or RO water. Um, from that I drop some cotton balls in, sprinkle my seeds on the cotton balls, and put some uh, hydrotin over top of the cotton balls just to hold it in place and then I turn on the irrigation pumps and or irrigation pump and the irrigation pump is probably going to run for the next week or so um, while the seed germinates it needs to be kept uh, moist so the pumps will run you know three or four times a day just to keep the cotton moist uh, normally people would use uh, like rocks wool or, or a coconut husk or something to start their seeds uh, once again, I didn't pick any up at the hydroponic store. I don't have an easy source for coconut husk or rock wool, but I have an easy source for cotton balls, so I figured I'd try it in that. Um, 
the seed actually has enough nutrients stored in itself that for the first week or so all I do is pump just clean water through it just to keep it moist and let it germinate on its own. Once the root system is starting to develop it's going to need some nutrient as uh, the hydroton I use as inert. There's, there's no nutrients like soil would provide nutrients, hydroton provides nothing. So with that you have to start adding your nutrients. Right now I'm using this stuff. It's made by General Hydroponics. It's called BioThrive. It's just a general grow formula. Um, you have basically a grow formula and then you have a like a bloom formula in the simplest essence. Um, grow is good for plants that stay in a vegetative state and right now I'm growing primarily just lettuce, uh, basil, herbs, herbs. Um, that'll stay in a vegetative state. They won't go through a bloom cycle. They won't fruit. So just a general grow nutrient is fine. I mix it to the uh, specifications that I say I actually start off um, a lot uh, in a lot lower concentration than they say for the first uh, couple weeks or so and then I bring it up to its concentration that it stays to use for hydroponics. This is a vegan formula. I'm growing vegetables. You don't really require a vegan uh, plant nutrient but it just makes me feel a little bit better. Once the first week or two has elapsed and the plants have grown roots that are deep enough to start contacting the nutrient solution in the bottom of the tank, I'm able to shut off the irrigation pumps on the top and then uh, the plant goes basically straight into like a, a deep water culture style of grow. So the hydroton is starting to wick the nutrients up um, through the uh, basically the porous nature of the rocks and the plants are seeking the water so they start to go down. Uh, once they get deep enough to start poking out of the bottom of the cups, that's when I will um, switch the cups from this system, just pull them right out, and I will drop them into my far system over there. And that's where they'll continue to grow um, to their full state till I, till I harvest. And then this closer system will go back to starting a new set of seeds. Once my plants have made it into this bucket, their roots are fully established and they can be uh, continued to grow in just a straight deep water culture system uh, where they're getting all their nutrients and all their air from the root system which is um, hanging in the basically the uh, uh, nutrition bath here in the bottom of the tank. Uh, every two weeks I swap out the bath. Um, as the system is plumbed into the airline it's kind of a annoyance to move this whole container off to dump the water out so I pop one of these cups out, drop a tube in, and then siphon off into a big 20, 20 liter tank. And then I'm able to put new water, new reverse osmosis water, into the tank, uh, mix in more of the grow nutrition, um, let it bubble away and mix up, and uh, let the plant grow for another two weeks before swapping out. The old water that I pull out of the tanks is, you know, it still has nutritional benefits, so I feed it to any house plants. And if it's summer, which it isn't right now, uh, I just pour it on the lawn or pour it in my vegetable garden outside, um, as there's still plenty to be used from it. It's no sense just pouring it down the drain. So that's basically um, a DWC hydroponic system in a nutshell. Um, just to recap, tanks I get at any big box store, air pump and all the air fittings you see I got at an aquarium store, cups I got at just a party store, any kind of store really, and uh, the BioThrive plant food is what I got at a hydroponics store. You could, I'm assuming in a pinch, use something like miracle Grow. It doesn't have nearly the same amount of uh, uh, minerals and, and whatnot as the uh, general organics you know, plant food, you know, specifically built for hydroponics, but it probably would get you by with lettuce or something like that. Um, the hydroton I always picked up at the hydroponics store, and the reverse osmosis water uh, you can pick up anywhere. Um, I pick mine up at Canadian Tire, it cost me a buck or two bucks for 20 liters, and uh, like I said, once I'm done with uh, the water with the old fertilizer in it, I just sprinkle it uh, on my lawn or in a garden, whatnot, to make use of it. So. Uh, once you're up and running, the operating costs are pretty low. I think it cost me about $130 for everything you see here. Um, but the hydroton is quite expensive. At, I think it cost me 30 bucks for the uh, 20 or 30 pound sack of it. 
Um, and the plant food was also quite pricey. I think it cost me about twenty dollars. The air pump was about ten bucks. Um, the two containers were I think two bucks each, and then all the air fittings and whatnot probably came out to another twenty bucks. Um, sure, that doesn't add up to one hundred and twenty, but uh, you get the picture. There's a billion articles online as well about making your own grow lights. You can make them out of compact CFLs. Um, some people are trying to make them out of LEDs. I would suggest just going with a simple cheap method of you know building your own out of uh, CFL bulbs or just using fluorescent tubes as I have. Uh, not the most efficient manner to go about it but definitely the fastest and the easiest. Um, if you're going for a crop that needs to flower or bloom and requires uh, you know more light for photosynthesis um, you might want to invest in a little bit better setup, uh, setup with maybe a little higher wattage. These two are 32 watt bulbs. Uh, T5 would be of, of greater efficiency. Um, but for lettuce and, and other vegetative crops, it's, it's enough. It'll get you by, at least to the experimenting stage. And if you like what you see, then you can, then you can always upgrade. Uh, so anyways, thank you. Oh, and here's just a quick video of the noisemaker. It's actually printing me out a seed starter tray for sprouting some beans. So that's what the noise in the background was. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching.